Hey guys, good morning. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop. Today is September 25th, 2020. And today is an exciting day because we are launching today our brand new Socialites free sew along. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the sew along and then I have a big announcement. So the sew along, you can find the pattern one by Lisa Alexander called Harmony. You can find it everywhere on Fat Quarter Shop. So you can find it on our blog. You can find it on our website. You can find it in Kimberly Stitch Squad, which is a Facebook group. You can find it in the Fat Quarter Shop group. You can find it in the Social Lights Lounge group. So it is everywhere. I've checked, it's all working this morning. A completely free pattern. And we have binders. And I'm gonna show you kind of the files that you can get. So the binders are going to sell out and we're gonna keep getting more and more. Basically, the reason it's slow is they have to package these. So the binder is super nice and Crystal put really nice page protectors in here for me. This is a file you can download. It has every block, the date it's releasing and the designer. We have a coloring sheet and we have a really good idea for next year based on um, some of the feedback we've seen in the group. I'm, I don't want to tell the idea, but it's going to be great. And it will help you not have to do um, so much work as you did this year. But this is also available free. We also have a section on the blog for just socialites. And all of this information is on there. And if you want to use triangles on a roll, it will tell you based on the size of block that you're doing which triangle rolls triangles on a roll we will be using and here is block one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take block one out and today i'm going to show you how to make the block and for this entire program i am going to do live demos on every single block and make every single block live so that's something that i think you guys have been asking for and one of the things that I'm going to be doing when I do that is I'm gonna show my shortcuts. So if you wanna do it the way I do it, you might not wanna cut until you watch the video because I'm gonna change things around. I hope I don't confuse you, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. So download your pattern. It's just printed out, it's free, it's in color, and block one is two pages. So there's the block. And I'm going to show you kind of what I'm going to be using. So here's my block ones. So I decided to sew all of them. So every block has already been made three times. So this is the nine inch block, the six inch block, and the three inch block. I used Homestead by April Rosenthal. It ships in October. So this isn't in the store yet, but it will be soon. So if you want to make yours exactly like mine, I will have three quilts at the end. And also at the end, I'm going to show you how to do a specialty piece backing that you guys have also been asking about. Now this program goes all the way till June. I want to show you on the back. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> For this program, I'm recommending that you press open. A lot of you hate that, and if you hate it, don't do it. Just figure out how you want to press. For me, there are so many points, and especially with the three inch, if you're doing the three inch, you absolutely have to press open. This block will not work if you don't press open because I tried and it doesn't work. There's too many seams and too many bulks, and your um, block would be bumpy. It would be like boom, boom, boom. It would, it would not look good because I did try it. Um, when I did the first block, I tried a couple of different things. So if you're doing these two sizes, you can press a different way. I decided to press open. When you press open, you will want to use a shorter stitch length. So if you normally use a two stitch length, you would use a 1.5. So whatever you um, normally use, just go down a little bit. So I've made these and every week I'm gonna show you these, these three. But for demo purposes, I decided that I don't want another block, the same exact fabric. I'm going to make a fourth quilt. So All Hollows Eve by Joanna Figueroa just came back in stock. So I'm going to do the six inch size with this layer cake. 
here are my fabrics for today. And I wanted to show you these are starched. So this is how they come off my rack. I use um, a rack from, Am uh, what do you call it, Lily? A drying rack. Drying rack. So I starch it and I soak it all the way through. I've got some videos on that. I learned it from Lisa Bonjean and I put it on the rack and you will see it comes with a crease. <coughs> oh, sorry. that's okay. And it's okay that it comes with a crease because I'm going to show you how you get it out. But this is how it came off the rack. And I'm going to show you everything from cutting every, the entire step. What I will be using will be these Creative Grids mats from size two and a half to six and a half. And I also have a seven and a half inch here that I'm going to need to use sometimes. Now, last week you guys asked if I could sell a set of these. So we are. So the set is going to include the two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. And that will be available on our website next Wednesday. Ooh. Yay. Exciting. And you will see that I have another ruler. It's just a longer ruler. I will use this, but it will be rarely. And that is because we're doing block by block. And I'm going to show you how I can serve fabric and how I don't really do strips, I cut more of square by square so that I have enough to make another block. So, there's that. I want to show you that we're going to be using a design board. You can buy these or you can make them. We have a video on our channel on how to make them. It's one of the very first videos we ever did with Lori Holt. And um, I have my alpha bitties here because we're going to do A through F today. These are my alpha bitties, and I put them in this jar. This jar is called Kilner's or Kilner. I cannot find more of them. I wish I could because one broke. I bought it on Amazon from a company in the UK, and I've had it for years and years and years, and I have a couple of them. So I already pulled out my alpha bitties, put them on my board. So I'll put this aside. Before you start, put in a new blade. So yesterday, Ashley put in an endurance blade for me, so we're ready to go. I do use endurance blade. I feel like they do last longer. If you are on a budget and you can't, that's totally okay too. Just change your blade. Whatever, your, whatever blade you're using, you'd wanna change before we start. And I got a fresh seam worker, and we're hoping that I don't have to use that today. So I left it in the package and hoping that I don't have to use it. <laughs> and we will also be using the brand new Kimberly Cuts mats to trim. It is easier to see on these mats than these. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is kind of put my rulers over here so I can get to them. And I'm going to do the pattern. Okay, more. A little bit more. There. Perfect. Thank you. Lily's fixing the camera. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do, today we're going to make the six inch block. And what I'm going to do is talk about the six inch block only, make just the six inch block. When we're done, I'm going to go back and tell you my tips for the three inch and the nine inch that are the same as the six inch. But I think it would be too confusing for me to do all three at once. So I've decided to just do the six inch. So what I'll do to make it easy for me, I'm going to cover up the nine inch. And I do this at home because I don't want to cut the wrong thing. So for example, if you have a Lori Holt book and it shows six inch and nine inch, you just put a sticky and you can use the stickies over and over and then that way you don't accidentally cut the wrong thing. Don't ask how I know because I do it all the time. So this is a trick. We're going to focus on the six inch. So before I start, let's, let me take any questions you have before I start the block. Because once I start the block, it's going to be a bit. Are there any questions? Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, for, oh, let me turn my mic on there. Okay. Funny comment from Threadneedle. Hello. Cheating on my cross stitch to watch quilting. Oh, thank you. That's and funny. I did forget to say I'm using RFL Color 2000, and we got a new machine. 
Woo-hoo. Lily found a machine, or Ashley who found the machine. So a customer emailed us. Actually. Oh my gosh, a customer! Thank you. This machine is so good. So I'm excited um, to use a new machine. Yes, she's in love with it. That's I know. Nice. I went home and I was like, I need a new one for my house. <laughs> Mine is really, really old, and there's really not a good um, service tech for Jukies in Austin. Every place I've taken mine, when they come back, they just seem louder and just not, they just don't know how to service them. Mm -hmm. So I never get mine serviced, so. Mm -hmm. From Abilene Johnson, if you don't have a lot of rulers, what would you suggest for a beginner? I would just get a six and a half by 18 and a half inch ruler by Creative Grids, and that will be plenty. Uh, and there are more questions, but they're more general questions, so I'll save those for the end. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to start. So we're going to go to the upper camera, and I'm going to take my handy-dandy notebook. And you guys always ask how I do things, so I'm going to show you the way I do it. It does take longer the way I do it, but um, I'm going to teach you. So I'm going to first read the pattern and decide what I'm cutting and how I'm cutting. So, fabric A is part of the hourglass, and fabric D is part of the hourglass. The math for an hourglass is you take the finished size of your hourglass, add one and a quarter inches. So for a two inch block, it would, this would finish at two inches, because two inches, three inches, no, two inches, four inches, six inches because you've got three sections right here. It's finished two inch, so you need to cut it three and, a, three and a quarter, but we go up to three and a half. So you're gonna see that we're gonna cut the A and the D three and a half, and we're gonna trim it down. That's gonna save you time and accuracy. So I'm gonna cut those just like it's shown. Fabric B is this middle square, so that's how I'm gonna cut that. And fabrics C and E are half square triangles. So I, we have written the pattern the traditional way because we don't want you to have to buy triangle paper if you don't want to. If you look in the instructions, there are three sizes. The first one is for your three inch block, your six inch block, and your nine inch block. So we will be working on this one, it's one and a half. So if it is unfinished one and a half, you need it to be finished at one inches. So I'm gonna pull out my triangle paper. I use triangles on a roll and it says one inch finished. So instead of cutting C and E, I'm gonna use triangle paper. So I'm gonna put a little note there and do that. F is just square, so I'm gonna cut that the same. So I have kind of looked at my pattern, analyzed it before I cut anything. So now what I'm going to do is draw it out. My drawing is horrible. Ask anybody who works here. These are my diagrams, they're horrible. So I'm gonna think about my background and I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna cut it so I waste the least amount. So first I'll cut a three and a half inch here and a three and a half inch here and I'll cut a two and a half inch here three, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. So I'm gonna cut nine and a half here, and then I'm gonna do the next section will be my triangle paper. That's how I'm gonna cut that. So this is my background. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna save all of this for later, another block. And then I'm gonna draw the print, which is the pink but today we're sewing it orange. The same thing, two, three and a half, four, two inches. So here I'm gonna do, that is gonna be triangle paper, so that's gonna go over here. So this will be triangle paper. And then we'll cut some one and a half inch squares here, see how many we get, and Whatever we don't get, we'll get from down here. So I will be able to save a large part, probably half of the layer cake if I cut this the way that I've drawn. Now this is obviously an extra step. You don't have to do this. 
This is the way that I do it because I really think it out before I cut. Are there any questions before I go on? Okay, good. So what I'm gonna do is put this aside, bring my iron out, and this is starched, so you can see it's, this is how you can tell your fabric is starched correctly. It stands up and it makes a tint. So, I am going to just iron it and that, I do use steam, but because I have starched, my fabric has already pre-shrunk, so it will not shrink anymore. But before I do anything, I'm going to just iron both of these. And then I'm gonna show you how they shrunk. Well, people are asking if the first you cut your yardage into a 10 inch square for the so background. So on this one, there are fabric requirements that Lily can pop up real quick. And on the six inch block, you can make the blocks with a layer cake. So, the reason I cut this into a 10 inch square is because the yardage just arrived yesterday. And because the yardage arrived yesterday, I used part of the layer cake background because that's what I had. What I will do is probably cut it into half yard sections or fat quarters or 10 inches. So you'll see what I do next week. It'll just kind of depend. but. Um, this was all I had, but you do not have to do it that way. So when I'm looking at my pattern, both A and D are three and a half inch squares. So I can keep this stacked. But before I cut, I wanna show you how the layer cake looks. This is 10 inches, and this is now nine and three quarters or nine and a half. So you will see that on the layer cake, one size does not shrink and one side does. And that is with all fabric when you starch, um, one side will shrink and one side will not. So because I have to cut two three and a half inch squares from both fabrics, I spilled all my alpha bitties. Mm. I am going to, so I have this, I'll put it over here. I'm going to cut using the square ruler. Now you could cut a strip and do it that way, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. And the reason I do it this way is I have very little waste. So there's one set. The next set I will do right here. This is why I should be using my new mat. <laughs> but I do cut towards myself. If you're new, please don't do that. I have never cut myself doing that, so. And I'm gonna try to show you guys every week exactly what I do at home. So I'm gonna try not to change anything so that you see what I do. So the first two are A's, and I will scratch out what I cut. That's just the way that I do it. And then these two are D's, and I'm gonna scratch out what I cut. And now I've got to do the triangle paper. So since it's together, I'm going to go ahead and do the triangle paper. And it says four two inch squares. So you're going to cut four off of here to replace the two inch squares. So I use washi tape to hold it down, hold it open. And I've got this, so I'm going to cut four. So what I will do is cut, and when you're using triangle paper, you want to cut exactly on the line. 
if you don't cut exactly on the line, it will not be accurate. You will get triangles that come out a different size. And then I've got these two also. And I'm gonna cut those. And then these, you can save. You can just put it on there and just washi tape it down. And I've used this washi tape probably 20 times, so it could fall off. <laughs> so here's my four. Take your fabrics, put them right sides together. And actually, I'm seeing a crease here that I don't want to have to worry about. So instead, I'm going to put it on this corner Ooh. instead of what I had originally planned. And then I'm going to pin it in place. I'm gonna, I do use a lot of pins. After it's pinned and right sides together, I'm going to cut around. So this is C and F. And my C is here. Yeah. So there we go. So I can put that aside. And I'm also going to cross them out. So now I've got one left, a two and a half inch square from my background. So I will separate the fabrics and I will use this. So that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. So my closest section is right here. So I will put it as close to the edge as I can. I'll go ahead and use the small mat. Do you know where the small mat is? Oh, oh here it is, yes. it's right here. Sorry, it's okay. So you can see it better. So I just go right here. So I cut as little as possible off. And this will be your fabric B. So I will put that on here. And I will cross it off. Now I will keep all of this. I'm not gonna trim anything off. off. I'm gonna keep this and use it in a future block. Like if I need a two and a half inch square or something, I've got plenty of room. That's also why I like to use these rulers is I know by placing it on top what really fits. So I will put this in my little box and I don't need it anymore unless I make a mistake. Now I will go to my print and it says four two inch squares. So to cut the four two inch squares, I will take a four and a half inch ruler and I'm gonna cut right there. So I will cut two sides. I will save all of this. Put it in my box. Now, so I'm gonna cut, so I've got two, four two inch squares. So first I'm gonna start with a four inch square because two plus two is four. So now I've got a perfectly square four inch block. I'm going to put my ruler on the two inch line and cut. And when I take this off, I'm going to be careful so that nothing has moved. I'm going to rotate. And I'm going to cut right there. These will be my fabric E's. And you can see that when I do this, I don't keep them in alphabetical order. I just keep them wherever it will fit. So now I will move my rulers kind of out of the way. And we're gonna start sewing. So I've cut everything. I'm gonna find a friction pin. So a friction pin can be controversial and I'll just talk about 
Well, first I'll go back to this. So you can see that I didn't cut exactly like this, and that's okay. The whole point of this is to make sure that I have thought out what I'm gonna cut and I have enough. So if you start with a smaller piece, like maybe a five by 10 or something like this, you can draw it out if you would like. So now I can put this away. I don't need this anymore. And the first step is to do the triangle paper. So with the triangle paper, you're going to stitch on your dotted line you're gonna use a foot that has a little bit open. So I'll show you the foot I'm gonna use. This one came with the machine. Oh, it's tight. New machine. Oh my goodness. It's not gonna come off. Oh. Uh, what in the world? Oh my gosh, it's grab... because it came like this. Let me grab a little other one. Yeah. Oh, there it goes, sorry. Oh. It's new, they had that screwed on tight. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> I was like, whoa. So this is the foot I'm using because I can see, when I'm stitching, I can see my dotted lines. So I stitch directly on the dotted lines. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do it fast like I do at home. Now, go to half an inch, half, so if you started a two, stitch with a 1.5 or 1.2. So just make it smaller. You could do it where you follow the line and rotate. I usually don't do that. So triangle paper usually has an arrow. I just ignore them. So now I have stitched on my dotted lines. We're gonna cut apart. So just cut directly on the line. So I'm gonna keep cutting, but I'm happy to answer any questions while I cut, because I think I can do both. So if there's any questions, Lily. Yeah, uh, a lot of people have been wondering what brand, or what model Juki that is. TL-2010Q, yeah. and Ashley will put a link to it, an Amazon link to it. Yes, yes. Okay, and Wilma Evans has asked, when using triangle paper, the paper is measured to the finish size and the pattern includes a quarter inch, so will the block be smaller and how do you compensate for that? Okay, so triangles on a roll, you look at whatever your unfinished size is in your pattern. This is one and a half. Take half an inch off, that's the finished size you need to start with. And if it says two inches, you would measure, and it's one and seven, it's actually one and seven eighths, but we made the instructions bigger so you can trim down. And we do have a triangle paper sheet that has got the cheat numbers on it. Yes. So let's link to that and that will probably help you. Yes. To take the paper off, I crease back. So actually I don't do this anymore because my kids do it. I have trained them very well on how to do the paper. Now, obviously, if I just had a little bit, I wouldn't, but mm -hmm. I will usually do six or seven blocks at a time, sometimes even eight. Do all the triangle paper at once, and then they have to pull all eight all at once. Oh. They like it, though. <laughs> and then it's just going to pull right off. 
triangles on a roll paper um, is my favorite. And sometimes there's a little piece that stays. That's okay. And then at home, I usually just throw this on the floor because then I get on my knees and pick everything up all at once because mm -hmm. it saves time. So now these are done. We're going to press them open. And while I'm pressing, I can answer questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy Blacklock, is there a reason for making a fresh cut on one side as opposed to using the edge of the previously cut piece? It's easier than trying to line up the ruler edge on that previous cut line? I always, I always um, just create a new, a new cut. That's just kind of how I do it. Um, so when I'm pressing, first I press the seam. I press. What do you call it that I do that I'm doing? Uh, setting your seam. Setting my seam. Sorry. <laughs> you set your seam, and then you press. We're gonna press to one side. Either side, it doesn't matter because I'm pressing open. Now, of course, when you're at home, you can do it however you would like. These small blocks would be really hard to do without pressing open. Lots of people are saying thanks for doing this, that they're lear learning a lot. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous about doing it. Um, okay, so now, before I press open, I'm going to cut the little dog ears off because if you do it after, you have to cut four times instead of two times. And so I'll do that real quick. And then I literally take these and throw them on the floor. Like I said, I just make a big pile on my floor and then I get on my hands and knees, kind of scoop it all up, throw it in the trash, and then I vacuum. But actually I don't vacuum, my son Peyton vacuums. He is the vac, he loves to vacuum. Mm. He knows more about our, um, so yeah, I would normally just throw this on the floor, but since I'm at work, I'll put it in the trash. <laughs> so now I will go back and press open. I will first finger press and then put the iron. Mm -hmm. If you are scared of burning yourself, which will happen, you could always use Lori's seam press roller the quick first. Press seam roller. Oh, sorry, what did I say? Oh, no, you're good. It's it, the, if you search it on our website, it's quick press seam roller. Yeah, that. But I always do it this way with my iron, and yes, I do burn myself. But it usually goes away pretty quick. I think my hands are used to it. <laughs> I was like, the other day I burned myself on a video with a hot glue gun. Oh my gosh, that took three days to go away. Oh no. It had like a white, like, I don't know if it was a blister, but like a white bubble on my finger. Oh, yeah. Like the beginnings of a blister. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Fuentes was asking if you have issues with your seam coming undone when you pull the paper off. No, because I stitch with a really small steam stitch allowance and I use um, a brand new needle and it doesn't pull off. If it's pulling off, you need to do a shorter stitch length. Uh, and can you remind all of us what that stitch length was? Okay, so it really varies from machine to machine. So the one at home, I use a 1.0. Mm -hmm. But I got this new machine yesterday, and it stitches different. So on this one, I'm using a 1.5. So whatever you normally stitch at, just go down about a 0.5 or more. Okay. And then Judy Matthews wants to know if the triangle paper is recyclable. Yeah, it's paper. Mm -hmm. And Lori said that you were testing me to see if I know my sewing terms and I get an A+. Plus. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm testing Lily. That's <laughs> funny. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the next step. And I'm going to lay all of these out the way the pattern has. So this is what we're doing right here. Let's see. And then I'm going to add my E's or my F's. I think I put the wrong. I might have put the wrong. Did I cut these wrong? F. 
Oh, I cut these wrong. These are supposed to be one and a half. I cut them wrong. Oh no. That's okay. That's typical. This happens. I'm telling you, this happens when you're cutting. So I cut this wrong because I was probably nervous. So I need these to be one and a half instead of two. So I just mm. stack all four. And cut. And that's gonna happen at home with you guys too. Like it just happens and there's no reason to get frustrated. You just re-look at your pattern, recut. And then you'll put these here. Hmm. And I cut the wrong amount too. It was supposed to be eight. So there we go. Mistake number two. <laughs> so I needed eight, one and a half. Who knows what I was cutting? I was cutting something else. So now I take this little piece. One and a half plus one and a half is three. So I will start with a three inch square. I'm still going to save this because you can still get one and a half from this. So I always cut a, if I need to do four, I'm going to cut a square and then sub cut from that. So three inches. I might have to just start throwing stuff on the floor. I'm trying to be neat. Okay. Then I will do one and a half. And one and a half. Yay. Yay. Yay for mistakes, right? <laughs> Yeah, people say that they're really happy you're keeping it real and that it's actually refreshing to see, um, you know, people being human on camera. Yeah, I mean, you, everyone makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. So so now I've laid out four units and I kind of keep them separate. So I'm following the pattern before I sew anything. I'm going to make sure the two whites are in the center. So two whites, two whites, two whites, two whites. Then we're going to chain piece. So I'm going to change my foot to a quarter inch foot and I'm going to chain piece. So I'm going to chain piece. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to keep sewing down here. Keep sewing down here. Keep sewing down here. Keep sewing. So I'm going to have a big chain and at the end I'll show you how to how to go from there and cut. So I and at home I would have had a design board for this. But for this, I'm just going to do it this way. So change your stitch length to like a, whatever's normal. So I'm going to do a 2.0. And chain piecing means you don't cut your thread. The key is to keep stay in order. So that's the first unit. Keep going. And I can answer a question. Uh, what size needle are you using? 80 dash one two and we put a new needle in also it's a universal needle from oh schmitz. yeah sorry um and i use schmitz that's the brand i use yes from barba Pouliot, what is setting a seam and why do it so setting the seam is i will show you in the next section but you set your iron flat on your seam before you press it it kind of locks in your thread stitches so when you press to one side, it will press nicer and flatter. And from Melb0810, is the triangle paper a special kind of paper which you can just cut with your fabric rotary blade? I use my fabric rotary blade. Some people don't, but I do. But it's um, Triangles on a Roll is the brand I use. I also own that company now because I loved it so much I bought it. It's also thinner paper, so I think it doesn't um, right. ruin your blades yes. as fast. So now I'm gonna leave it all chained together and we're gonna press. So this is setting your seam, just setting your iron on it, making sure to not rock it like that. So first you just set it, and then I'm gonna press all of them one way, and then we're gonna press open. 
So first I will press towards the print that is not a half square triangle because it will go nicer. And this is how I do it at home. Keep it all together, saves time. This one looks funny. So this one looks funny. I gotta do something with this one. No, it just looks funny. I guess it's fine. So now I will turn it over and press the whole thing open all at once. So everything's upside down now. And I'm gonna move this slightly so I don't burn myself because I don't have a lot of room between here. So I literally just press open. And doing it this way kind of keeps all the seams behind me flat because it keeps the iron on there longer. The key to this is just to not rock your, not rock your iron. So everything is nice and flat. Now I'm going to cut apart my units. So I'm going to cut apart one, two, three, four. And I will show you now how that looks. So now you don't have to line them up because they're connected. This one, something's wrong with it. I'm gonna fix it. You can tell that something's wrong with it. Hmm. So, I think my seam is off. So I'm gonna redo the seam real quick. I redid my seam, I'm gonna re-iron it flat. So now we're just gonna sew these closed. What I do before I go to the machine, can we zoom in a lot here? Yeah. Is at this point I have to cut this, this thread so that I can see what I'm doing. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I make sure that they're butted up, like the orange and the orange and the white and the white, and I put a pin, and I pin straight down to keep that in place. And then I will pin at the end. And this is where I'm gonna start. I don't need to pin there. So I pin a lot. I love my pins. <laughs> my pins got discontinued, I'm devastated. And mm -hmm. Ashley found me an extra one and brought it to me and I almost cried. <laughs> Cause I can't find, the ones that I found to replace, they're not, they're not exactly the same. Mm. And you get used to something. Mm -hmm. It's just like I got used to my starch. You get used to something. It's hard to change. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a creature of habit. Mm. Also, Ashley says it's okay if you put the scraps on the floor. We can pick them. Well, up that's just rude. Aww. I need to get. I need to. I need. I don't know. I need to figure something out. No, at home, um, I'll just sew for like. I mean, if I'm only gonna sew for like five minutes, I'm not gonna throw it on the floor. But if I'm sewing for eight hours it's quicker to just throw those on the floor and then pick them up later. My kids like to pick them up. They think it's funny, but I mean, usually I do it. So then I just have these here. If I was at home, I would have them on a design board, but since we're doing demos, I wanted to have fewer things. So now I'm gonna just put these in the machine and use a quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna chain piece, so I'm not cutting them apart. And I usually have this. It has a magnet. Some people don't want a magnet next to their machine. Um, this machine is not computerized, so I've never had an issue with it. It's more of a manual, industrial, you know, it doesn't have like a computer in it. Mm -hmm. Like a, I don't know how to explain it, but. Yeah, yeah it's not computerized. Yeah, it's, it's just a plain machine. So if you have a computer machine, you might not want to do that. 
and then it's a magnet so it just picks them up and put it back here and in my sewing room I have three of these one is on my cutting table one is on my sewing machine to right here and then one is where I sit kind of to the left so I've got them everywhere because I'm always using them now I'll probably um, just iron these Set the seams. Can you push it up a little bit? Oh, yeah. Thank you. And then here, just to any side. Oh, can we zoom out? Because I can't get the iron. Oh, yeah. The iron's going to hit the machine. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Hold that. No, that's okay. Thanks. Ooh. So press to any side. And doing all this chain piecing and ironing with chain piecing, it does take a while to get used to. So if you try this at home, it doesn't work. Don't give up, just keep trying. You just have to kind of get used to it. So those look good. Now, if any of these points did not match, I would unrip my seam and do it again. If you're at home and you don't mind that a seam does not match, do not rip it out. That's just what I do. Now I flip it over and I'm gonna press them open. So again, use my fingers and just go. You wanna make sure when you're pressing open that you have the iron on it long enough for it to stay. The one thing I forgot to bring that we might have in here, Lily, is one of those clappers. Oh, yes. Because mm -hmm. I would like to show that and I forgot. Is it over here? Uh -oh. oh, it is. Oh my gosh, Lily, thank you. Yeah. So. I found out about these now. I know these are not new, it's not a new invention, but to me, it's a new invention. It is awesome. So I have these, I put them on my windowsill. And if I feel like I've got two, like if you get something that's super bulky, now first you have to have the heat on them. It doesn't work if you don't have the heat. Then you put this right on there. And I'm gonna let that sit while we do the next step. And when I come back, it's gonna be even flatter than it already is. So let me put some heat on there and leave it flat. There's a small, this one's called a quilter's clapper and this one's called a tailor's clapper. Mm -hmm. They're made by Riley Blake. And um, I love them. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna sit. And now we're going to do the next step, which is hourglass. So again, your math, if you're doing this, if you're doing a pattern at home, what a, if it doesn't say trim on your step, like the way Crystal did it, where it says trim, then just when with your pattern, add a quarter inch when you cut your squares, because then you can trim. But if you look at our pattern and it says trim, you don't have to cut bigger here. So we've already cut bigger here because Crystal figured this in the math for you. So you're gonna take your A and D and I'm going to make sure they are lined up. And again, because we're trimming, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate here. Take a ruler and cut from corner to corner. I think I'm gonna get something here where my rotary cutter can just stay right here, like a tray or something, mm -hmm. now that I'm doing this. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna line them up into groups. So I'm gonna line them up on my table, right sides together, and I'm gonna do all four. So I, at home, will do this on a large design board. I will not stack them on top of each other. That is one thing I don't do because when I do that, I find that I do I make mistakes. So just lay these out, just like your pattern right here. And you just kind of want your lights and darks to oppose. And from here, I'm gonna stitch down, stitch down, stitch down, and stitch down without cutting my thread. That's called chain piecing. 
and I'm going to go from left to right. And I can answer questions. Mm -hmm. From Marilyn G, will there be nine and nine and a half inch triangle paper? No, that's too big. So that our largest, our largest that we're doing is seven inches. With, if you're not going to use triangle paper, just cut your fabric a little bit bigger, like a quarter inch, and trim down. Oh, and we do have lots of members and super chats that have been coming in, so I'm going to go through a few of them. Perfect. Uh, Catherine H. is a new member that joined right before the live stream. Welcome, Catherine. Here, I'll cut to front camera, too. There we go. Um, and Shirley Connor is a new member. Welcome, Shirley. Thank you. And Patricia Hamilton, new member. Welcome, Patricia. And another new member, Linda Testino. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Valeria Bauer for 19.99. Thank you so much, Valeria. And she put the little pair that is looking at itself in the mirror and says, thanks for being you. Thank you. She she does a super chat every time. Thank mm. you. You don't have to. Thank you so but much. Thank you. All right, more new members. Jennifer Schultz, welcome Jennifer. And Mana Stork, welcome Mana, or Mona, sorry. <laughs> and Joanne Quickenden, welcome Joanne. New member Susan Black, welcome Susan. Yay. Okay. And then another new member, Plasma Girl. That's a cool username. Welcome, Plasma Girl. I'm going to go back to our top camera there. So now I'll cut these apart. And um, I'm going to I'm going to basically do this the same way I did the other. So Lily can keep talking and you'll just see that I'm doing the same exact thing I did earlier, except that now it's coming off the mat. So but I'm still going to do the same thing. But yeah, Lily, you can talk. OK, uh, new member, Sarah Alexander. Welcome, Sarah. Yay. Yay. And then I will address real quick. Uh, membership is a YouTube thing. Uh, it is similar to a Patreon where uh, you pay $4.99 a month to get extra perks behind the scenes stuff. Absolutely not required or necessary. Um, it just helps us pay for the production of our videos, um, everything that goes into it, the equipment, the staffing. And yeah, so thanks for everyone who is a member. Um, and like I said, it is on YouTube only. And we had a super chat from Deb Keller for $4.99. And Deb says, Fat Quarter Shop is awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Deb. And then another new member that joined is Crafting a Planned Life. Another great username. I love all these creative usernames. So welcome, Crafting a Planned Life. And then... Miasia Osby gave us a super chat for $4.99 and she says, Kimberly, you are taking us to church today. So here's my offering. I'll pass the basket. Thank you. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Oh, well, it, it gets even better. Um, oh, sorry. Bonita Nance gave us a $5 super chat and Bonita says, in the pew, got the basket and adding $5. Who's next? Oh, oh my gosh. you guys. That sounds like a song. It could be a song. I think Taking Me to Church is a song, but... I know, I was like, there's something like that. Okay, so now, the again, I've got four. I'm just going to cut a part between these. And at this point, you're going to see... You've got these little tails hanging off, or dog ears, or whatever you want to call them. Don't worry about those. We'll do that later. Again, I'm going to cut this as I go. Pin just like I did, and do the same thing. So making sure it matches and pinning, and we're gonna hope that I don't have to open that brand new seam ripper. That's my goal for today. <laughs> because I do use a very small stitch, and when you use a small stitch, it is much harder to unpick. Don't ask how I know, especially if it's a border. Have you ever got a border on your quilt? Realize it's the wrong direction and have to unpick 100 something inches. That's never fun. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. A few more super chats here from Sally Nagel for four ninety nine. Uh, Sally says in the pew. Aww. Thanks, Sally. Uh, and the next super chat is from Candy Kerr, and Candy gave us five dollars and says in the pew, learning so much. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna go to front camera, and I'm just gonna sew these, and Lily can talk while I sew. Thanks. Again, chain piece, I don't cut apart. Now this machine does have, let me explain, well, let me see. This machine, if I can explain it right, it has a cutter. So when I'm done, I cut, and how you cut is you tap this side, so mm -hmm. this is the way you would go forward. You tap this, and it cuts it off, mm -hmm. and that saves me time, because it's one less thing that I have to do. Mm -hmm. And our next super chat was from Susan Summers. Thank you, Susan, for four ninety nine. Thank you. And then Sunshine Girl seventy four gave us a super chat, also for four ninety nine. And they say, "In the pew, pew, loving this." Thank you. Pew -pew. Another thing that I forgot to mention is as okay. So as I get to this pin. I get as close to the pin, pull it out, but I try not to ever sew over a pin. I used to sew over them until um, one of them broke and kind of flew in. The, so I don't sew over my pins. Some people do, like Barb and Mary from me and my sister, they sew over their pins. So whatever works for you, that's just what I do. So same thing, I'm just doing the same thing. Set my seam. Press to one side, press open, and then we're gonna trim, and then we're gonna put the block together. Kim Fuller wants to know what water you put in the Oliso iron. I use spring water. It's really inexpensive and you buy it by the jug. On the instructions for the Aliso, it says not to use distilled water. I used to use that and then a customer emailed and said, um, told me. So I use like spring water. I find that if I use the water from my sink that the water, I don't want to say gets dirty, but sometimes it'll spit brown because there's calcium in it. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, I don't really know the reason why. I just know that I have better results. And it's super inexpensive. It's like 99 cents a jug, and then you can recycle the, um, you can recycle it. So I'm going to cut these apart. And then we're gonna trim them down. So it says trim to, for this one, two and a half. This is the most important part. So what you'll do, I like to use a two and a half inch ruler. If you don't have this type of ruler, you can use a regular ruler and divide it in half. So two and a half divided by two is 1.25. So you need, to, this needs to be, you need to cut 1.25 from the center. So the Creative Grids rulers are all I use. I place it on there. Can we zoom in? Yeah. My head might get in there, but I wanna show. Thank you, mm. that's good. So when you've got it, I've got my line all the way across. This point matches right there, and this point matches my intersection, and this circle in the center is right on that on that um, intersection. So I cut two sides. And then cut the other sides. So now you have a perfect block. And so anytime you're at home doing any type of pattern that does an hourglass, just add a quarter inch. If you want a little bit more to cut off, you would cut, just add three eighths of an inch or something. So that's just a trick. 
I like to make mine bigger and trim down. I would never make an hourglass and not trim it down, no matter what size it was. So I'm gonna do this one and then I will show you, I can show you how if you don't have a ruler like this, what you can do. And I usually cut faster, but I have to cut pretty far away so it's harder. So let me find a ruler that will work with that. Okay, so pretend you don't have a two and a half inch ruler. You take a ruler like this that has a 45 degree line. Like I said, this should be two and a half inches. Okay, two and a half inches divided by two is not 1.25, it's something else. It's not? Oh, it is 1.25, yeah. So you need to be 1.25 from the center. But you have to put this line on your intersection and then your 1.25 is here. And it just is gonna take longer. So you do one cut, rotate. You put your 45 degree line again, but you have to line up this line also. So you kinda have to finagle it a little bit. So straight up here, 1.25 and do that all the way around. Now when you get to here, you can just do two and a half. So you just wanna make sure you're here. I don't have the best results when I do this. I'm more likely to make a mistake, so we're hoping that we didn't make a mistake here. Yeah, we didn't. So you're gonna see though that it's not 100% perfect. I'm a little bit off here. And that's because I see how I have a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. It's much harder to get these results doing this, but that is how you do it. So again, line it up, match the corners. My ruler keeps moving because it's a smaller ruler. When I do something with like a four and a half inch ruler, it's not gonna move, but the smaller rulers will move more often. So now we can put our block together. I'm gonna take a little break and Lily's gonna talk for a second. So I can have a little break and I'll be back and we'll do the block. Mm -hmm. I can get out, sorry. I locked myself in here. <laughs> That's funny you did. I did. Alright guys, give me one sec to get up there. Intermission music. Oh man, she really did block yourself up here. Okay, hi everyone. My name's Lily, even though my shirt says otherwise. Um, it's an I Love Lucy t-shirt. So I'm going to talk to you guys about Journey to Nebula in our next intermission because uh, I have a couple things to show you all about that. But right now, let's see, let's just talk about uh, channel memberships for YouTube. I see you guys asking more questions about them. Uh, so as I mentioned, it is like a monthly membership, totally optional. I don't want anyone ever to feel like they have to pay to get our content. Um, it's just extra things like coupons and free patterns that are usually paid on our website. And uh, we've been doing every two weeks, we do like a members only video where Kimberly will show either a new fabric or um, something coming up, or we'll do like a Q and A and just get like a preview of things before anyone else gets to see them for our members. It is $4.99 a month. We have a video where I talk about um, how to join on an Apple device because Apple will try to charge you more than that. Um, yeah, those are our channel memberships. Uh, I've seen you guys asking about the walking foot on the Juki as well. Uh, I don't think Kimberly has tested the one that came with this Juki, and otherwise she um, doesn't really use the walking foot very much on here. Oh, thanks, Lori. I see that you said that you love my shirt. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I got this from a, a store called Unique Vintage. I think it's in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, yes, I'm obsessed with I Love Lucy, so that is why. 
And let's see, Super Chats. I'll break Super Chats down for you guys real quick as well. Um, both Super Chats and channel memberships are both on our YouTube. Um, Facebook doesn't offer those things for us right now, so it's all centralized in our YouTube channel. Um, it's also easier to get content out to you guys that way as well. Uh, but a Super Chat is, we call it a virtual tip jar. Uh, so everyone who's giving us a Super Chat right now, um, again, not necessary in any way. It is the kindness of all of y'all souls <laughs> to give us a super chat. So instead of being like a monthly fee, like the membership, it's just like a one-time uh, quote unquote donation uh, that comes to our YouTube channel and again, helps support production of our videos and everything. Um, we do a lot of video here. If you guys <laughs> watch our YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, helps us out a lot if you do. And Kimberly is back in the room, so I will hand this back over to her. Do, 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 her music. I totally blocked myself in. <laughs> Maybe I won't do that next week. Okay, so now we gotta put the block together. So this is when I always use the design board. I usually have a large, small, medium out in my house. I usually have them everywhere. And the great thing about my little jug that I have, or jar, is ta-da, I'm done, I put them back in. Save them for next week. So now I'm gonna follow my pattern and put it together. And the reason I like a design board is it will stay on your fabric. So another tip is if you're traveling, when you can travel again, but when you're traveling, say you're going to your friend's house and y'all are gonna sew. You could lay out your blocks, put another design board on top, lay out the next block, put your design board or your cut fabric. And then what Lori does is she puts a big rubber band around it. Then you can travel and everything stays flat. So I'm just following. This is easy to mess up. So I'm following. So the way that I check this is I know that I need a solid in each corner. So I've got a solid here and I've got solids here. And then the way I think about it is it makes a big circle. So this goes a circle on the outside. And then this, you need the whites on the outside, whites on the top and bottom, and it looks right. So at this point, I will go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch down here but I'm gonna pin as I go. Instead of pinning right now, I pin as I go. So I will do the first one, pin. I usually pin just at the bottom. There's no intersections to pin. And I'm just gonna go straight down using the quarter inch seam. And as you're stitching, just make sure on the bottom and the top, you try to keep your press seems still open. And this one, I don't feel like I really need to pin because it lined up perfectly, so I don't feel like I need to pin there. And again, I'm chain piecing. Now what you could do is you could keep adding if you wanted. This block is really small, so I won't do that. But if I'm working on a 12 inch block, I will sew this and then sew this because there's not as many seams in the way. But because this is a smaller block, and especially doing the, if you're doing three inch, you'll want to iron now. And that's personal preference, that's just what I do. So I'll do the same thing, I'll keep it chained Set my seam, press to one side, then press open. Are there any questions, Lily? Yes. From Carol Schmidt, will pressing the seams open on a small block help with piecing? It will help it lie flat. It will not help with your piecing, but it will lie flat. So when there's all these bulk seams, and some of the blocks, this block is 
is level, let's see what level we gave it. We gave it intermediate. Mm -hmm. um, the advanced blocks, there's just not enough room for the seams. It's easier to do the press, pressed open once you have more experience though. Mm -hmm. But it will make it look flatter and nicer instead of bulky. And now see, I did this seam and it, look at it, it's all crooked. So I just kind of move it and repress it. Mm. And then a few people were wondering um, why you're not using leaders and enders for this block. Oh, I never use leaders and enders. There's been times in my life when I do, but I hardly ever, like, I haven't used those in years. I don't do that. I showed it in the beginner series because that's mm -hmm. something that beginners like to do, but I don't do it mm -hmm. ever. And it's this machine, it starts with a, I don't know, I just don't feel like I need it. It doesn't, mm -hmm. this doesn't um, gather up. I've had machines where it will kind of gather up. I've never had any problems with this machine, so I just don't. Mm -hmm. So again, I make sure I've got them going the right way and just, I'm gonna cut these apart now so that, because if you started chaining, if you started chain piecing, this would be hanging off. So I cut it apart after I iron so that I don't have a lot of bulk on my machine. So again, just pin and stitch. And a few people are wondering if you pressed open on the nine inch block. I did. It's up to you. You can definitely press to one side on the nine inch block. On the six inch block, you could do either the three inch block, you can't. I did all of mine at the same time. So when I showed you the three pink ones, I did all of them at the same time. So I made like, um, so like when I made these, I did three design boards and stacked them. And so I would do, cut this, put it on one design board, cut this, put it on one design board, cut this, put it on one design board. But as I did each step, I did it three times. And so it's easier to press open. And it looks pretty, it makes me happy. Yeah. And if you don't like to press open, you don't have to. You can do whatever you wanna do, totally. You don't have to do it the way I do it. There's nobody that's gonna know anyway when it's all put together. Mm -hmm. So, my grandma, when she when she died, she had made all the, I used to give her scraps from Fat Quarter Shop. Every one, there, I don't even think in the quilts there's one seam that meets. It's okay, nobody cares. They're in every one of my uncle's houses, in my house, in my uncle's house, my mom's house. Nobody cares. Cause she couldn't see, like she had um, glaucoma. So she had, really bad vision. So she just did whatever. My uncles have no idea. They don't care. Mm. So that's what I mean. Do whatever you want to do. Now, I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put, I, I'm going to iron that. Kind of put this down real quick. Let it sit, answer a couple questions. That way it stays nice and flat before I assemble it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a funny conversation happening where Sandy Taylor said, Kimberly says she wants to be Lori. I want to be Kimberly. Oh. And then Teresa said to Ta Sandy Taylor, I want to be Lily or Ashley so much I'd do different if I were young again. Aww. Oh my gosh. I would never want to be young again. I would never <laughs> want to be Lily Sage ever. You couldn't pay me. You can pay me a million dollars. I'd be like, no, I'm not going back. I was an idiot when I was her age. Aww. I mean... I don't know. No, I couldn't go back and be her age. <laughs> I, I would like to have my um, weight and everything from that age, but not, not my brain. So here I have three rows and I'm just going to sew them together. So I'm going to pin. So you can see that right here and right here, these meet up. So what I will do I call it poke a pin. I just made that up like 10 years ago. I put the pin right where, can you zoom yeah. a tiny, tiny bit? I'll move all this mess out of my way. Thanks. 
So I put that pin right in the intersection where the point is. So exactly where the point is, push it in. I find the point on the next one and I push it in. So it's exactly in the pin. Now, you want, it, you want your pin to stand up like that. Hold it in place and pin. You can pin twice or once. I'm gonna pin my entire row we're gonna hope it meets, and if it doesn't, we will pick it out and do it again. So again, in the point, and you wanna have thin, um, thin pins when you do this, because if you do it with thick pins, you're gonna start pulling out seams. I'm going to look and that matches and see that is a little bit off. Lily's looking, but it's like, <laughs> look, if you go like this, it'll look better. So I'm just going to go over that seam like a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm going to show you a mistake I see on the back that I'm going to fix. Okay, that looks better. Now I gotta get out my seam ripper that I didn't want to get out. It's okay. And I'm gonna show you what I do. Now, when I stitched, I accidentally made this go one direction. And I don't like that because when I iron, it's gonna be a big old bump. So I'm not gonna stitch the whole thing out. I just put my my seam ripper right there. Do that, and I'm gonna go over that real quick. And now it's flat again. I've got some extra threads I'll get off. The one thing about the Juki is it cuts the thread super, super thin so you don't have a lot of bulk on the back. But I do, as I go, I kind of take that off. So I'm gonna press. So when you look at this, you can press, I'm gonna press this open ultimately, but your first press should be where it's easier. So when you lie this down, does it go easier this way? Or does it go easier this way? And you will feel it, it will go way easier that way because there's less bulk. So I will always press to the side that's easiest first. And when it is a row, I'm gonna really press it with my fingers first. And I really get this iron right on top of those intersect, right seams, I guess, right on top. I, nothing drives me crazier, Lily will tell you, than if I see a quilt that has a duck pleat. Mm -hmm. A duck pleat, I can see it a mile away. It'll look like that. And if you want duck pleats, that's fine. I don't. So that's the way I get rid of them. And I really press down. I don't want my block to be floppy. Press open. And right here, I forgot to cut, cut my little seam. If you've got a, like something connected, you wanna unconnect it so that you don't have a thread going between each side. And I'm gonna let that really sit. Fix this. It's that same one that wants to go the other way. So let it sit. And then put this down. I'm gonna let that sit a little bit. Sue Sweeney said, did she say duck pleat? I made that word up, but yes, a duck pleat. Quack, quack. Yeah, I made it up. So to me, that just means that, okay, you can see my intersection, it's flat. 
some people quilt and they don't iron it flat, so then it's like that. Yeah. And then like if Gina quilts over it, it's funky. And you can feel it, it makes a 3D when you don't need a 3D. Mm -hmm. It's like when it's not pressed right at the seam and it overlaps. It. Right, it's like you press it, but you leave, a, you don't press it all the way down. Okay, so then I go back to my design board and make sure I've got it right. Sometimes you might do this and you don't wanna do that. So that's why having a design board is helpful. And at home, I do carry it from my sewing table to my ironing board and back. It keeps it um, where I don't make any mistakes. Before you sew that final seam, a few people were just uh, trying to make sure you sewed it right. So can we double check that real quick? That, um, I think they were saying the center block might not have been correct. But I just wanna make sure before you do your final seam. It's right to me. Excellent. So let me, well, let me compare it to this one because I've been wrong a lot of times. Okay, so let's put this here. So it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These go this way. I think it's right, Lily. I think it's right. I think it's good. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to quadruple check. Yeah, because I do make mistakes. Okay, so I think it's right. We're gonna hope it's right. So I'll put that together. I'm gonna do the same thing with the pinning. Poke a pin. Gosh, I hope it's right. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, let me know if y'all have any questions while I'm pinning this. Yes, we have tons of super chats, so I'm gonna go okay. through those. Yes. Uh, from Teresa Evenhouse, uh, she gave us five dollars, and she put a little fox that says "Bravo." Oh, thank you, Very little foxy little fox. fox. <laughs> and then Barbara Daniels gave us a super chat for four ninety nine, and she says "Awesome." Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And then we had a new member, Lily Guzman. Welcome, Lily. Namesake. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, let's cut the front camera there. And then we got a $10 super chat from Linda Hester for $10. Oh, sorry, you said $10. Um, I figured this is tithing on today's purchase. Thank you for going over and above every time. Thank That's you. Funny. Thank you, Linda. We, I mean, I read every comment you guys write, and I think this is what you guys want is to see me. And I just think it's kind of crazy that y'all want to see me do a block. But if you want to see me do a block, I'll do a block. Oh, look, it's perfect. Woo! Woo! Okay. Confetti cannon for perfect. Yes. So now I'm going to iron this. But yeah, I can keep answering questions. Okay. Uh, okay, next super chat is from Jennifer Meese for $9.99. And Jennifer says, passing the basket again. Oh, thank you. I love this uh, analogy we got going on here. So again, here, I'm going to go press first. Okay, when you lay it down... You can just do this or this. It's gonna tell you which direction it goes. If it's that way, you know it's not easy to press. If you do this and it lays, you know you can press that way easier. Mm. So it's kind of like, because that first seam, getting it flat is, you wanna go the direction with the least resistance. And that's how I, at home, like this one's easy for me to tell because this is a solid and it's not, you know, but sometimes it's not, and that's what I do is I lay it down in whichever way the wind blows, basically. Whichever way it lays or lies. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when I iron, I really take my time. I don't go fast. I go fast on the machine, but not on the ironing board. But that's my favorite part. My favorite part is to cut and to press. I could just cut quilts all day long. I need like a Kimberly that'll just sew. <laughs> so I don't really like that part. I mean, I do, but not as, I just don't like it as much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so see, right there, it did it again. So again, just get your seam roller. So now I'm gonna trim the block. There's two different ways you can trim. And I'm gonna to talk to you about both and then tell you what I do. So what I used to do, 
is what I'll show you first. I used to take a square Creative Grids ruler, place it on here, and trim around. But I don't like that. I don't feel like I get the best results because I feel like I might cut something off. So instead, what I do now, I'm going to put these in my basket. Do you think we should zoom in a tiny bit? Yeah. Sorry. It'll be the last time we have to zoom in. One of the reasons, well, I need to do it on my blue mat. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. So you can see. Thank you. So what I will do, I do each side one at a time. One of the reasons I use Creative Grids is because of the lines. On every ruler they have, on one side there's dotted. You can see the dots. And one side it's just dashes, like white dashes. But I can really see these dots right here. So whenever I'm cutting, I use this side of the ruler. I put it on the edge and I'm lining up here, here, and it's just a tiny bit that I'm gonna trim off. But you want to be, sorry, quarter inch away, quarter inch away from your points, that's the most important part, and then lining this up. Trim, and then I rotate. Now, this one I will line up at the top and I will line up at the intersections. And I go pretty slow. So this one's a little bit, got a little bit more. So it's that one block that I was telling you was a little bit funny. So I've got it lined up here and I'm gonna trim and I've got a quarter inch and a quarter inch. And you can tell right here, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect square on that edge. It's fine. It will, um, it will be fine when I put it in the quilt. So again, Top edge, quarter inch away. Top edge again. Now everyone cuts different, so you can cut however you want. This is just what I do. Now I'm gonna show you something that's gonna make you feel better now that I put it up. Okay, my block's not six and a half. It's six and three-eighths. So my block is six and three-eighths. It's not six and a half. Everything will be fine. It will work out in the end when we put it together. If you look at this one, they're probably not even the same size. See, this one that I made at home on a different day is six and a half. So when I'm at home, apparently, oh yeah, that's exactly six and a half. So when I'm at home, apparently I sew more accurately, but that's okay because that's where I'm more, you know, more comfortable. I'm not on camera. But your block, when I first started, my blocks were always a quarter inch exactly shorter. It's okay. It's going to work out. Don't worry about it. It's fine. If you have two blocks, like one of your, like say block one is big, block two comes out smaller, it's fine. It's all going to work out in the end. So at the end, don't feel so much pressure to have an exact block because you're not gonna have one, because I don't. I mean, there we go. So you can see the difference on different days. Maybe I was in a better mood one day than the other. Maybe I had more time on one day than the other. Maybe just whatever. So don't feel like you have to um, do that. Now what I'm gonna do now I'm going to talk through a couple of things and then I know there's a lot of questions. So the first thing is, if you're, I'm going to talk about the three inch. So if you're going to make this three inch block and you want to use triangle paper, you would use half inch finished, which doesn't exist. So what I did is I used one inch finished, which is right here. When it was done, I used a ruler, this ruler, this two and a half inch ruler, and I trimmed it down. So I still use triangle paper, but it wasted, but that's okay. It's faster for me to do triangle paper and trim down after. 
So you would use, half inch doesn't exist that I know of unless you can find some. If, and then, um, so you would use half inch finished triangle paper, which doesn't exist, so use one inch, do the entire step, then trim down to what it says right here, which is one by one. You would do all of the other steps exactly the same because Crystal wrote the pattern where you can trim down and it tells you your trim down size on the pattern. If you're going to do the nine inch block, you would use one and a half inch finished triangle paper to do the triangles and you would do the rest of the block exactly the same way. And that is my block one. It is again called Harmony, Lisa Alexander from Moda is the one who designed it. It is completely free. On our blog, we have fabric requirements and everything you need. And if you join late, don't worry, you'll be able to catch up. It's gonna be one block a week through June of 2021. So now I can answer any questions. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, a few people are suggesting perhaps the difference came from it being two different machines and how this one's newer. Oh size. yeah, it could be, yeah. And, and the quarter inch foot is different. And, the one I have at home is different. Okay. And then I think there was some confusion at the beginning um, since you were using a layer cake, but I think in our fabric requirements it says to use a fat quarter for the six inch. So if you could explain that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use one, one square for each. And instead of, so if you're doing it in a larger, if you're doing, you can use, okay, if you're using the fat quarters, you use each fat quarter twice. Mm. So I'm gonna do it where I use the 10 inch squares once. And if I have a bigger piece, like I need more than a 10 inch square, I will pick one in the layer cake that has duplicates. And the only reason I'm using a layer cake is because that's what I had, that came in last week. And I prep everything for the weekend and on Monday, I finish prepping for Friday's live stream because I think about the live stream all week, what I need to add. I don't want to do it last minute, but that's all I had. So, and I, I could have got a fat quarter bundle, but I can, I can make it work with a layer cake. From Threadneedle, is it better to pin than use Wonder Clips in patchwork? So in patchwork, I only use pins. I use Wonder Clips for binding only. And uh, we do have tons of super chats, so I'm going to get through a few more here before moving okay. on. Uh, from Sandra Engstrad, uh, $5, and Sandra says, pass the basket. Thanks, Fat Quarter Shop, for being so awesome. Thank so you. So S-E-W. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. And then our next super chat is from Sandy K for $5. And Sandy says, Kimberly, thank you for these great instructions. Passing the basket again. Thank you. So I hope you guys like this. If you don't, I will listen to your feedback. You can ask Lily. I try to listen to all feedback. Mm -hmm. I tell her the worst thing I could do is say no. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. That's true. Okay, and then super chat from Trisha and Nell for $5. Trisha says, oh, figured it out. Uh, push the dollar sign, duh, passing the plate. <laughs> oh, on the little thing, yeah. On how to do a super chat, that was very cute. Thank you, Trisha. Um, New member, Fran Richards. Welcome, Fran. Thank you. And then super chat from Deb Summers for $4.99. And Deb says, thank you, Fat Quarter Shop, for all you do. I'm in the pew, too. Thank you. That's funny. OK. Um, and then there are more super chats, but we can save those for a little later in the show. OK, so what we're going to are there any more questions on socialites? Not at the moment. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the socialites away. I'm gonna take a break. We're gonna to have to reset the, the, um, the set part. real quick to move everything and then we will be right back. And I will, if you have questions on socialites later, I can also still answer them. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna just um, reset the set real quick.
All right, everyone. Kimberly's gone to the bathroom real quick. She'll be right back. And to answer real quick, a few of you guys were asking about the payment method for our YouTube channel memberships and for Super Chats. The way that works for channel memberships, it's a recurring payment that happens automatically. Um, for Super Chats, since it's a one-time thing, it just uses whatever payment method you have saved on your YouTube. So since YouTube is owned by Google, whatever account you use for Google and whatever payment methods you have on there, whether that be a credit card or PayPal, whew, sorry, I can't breathe, or anything like that, um, then it'll just pull from that main one. And you can edit all of that in your Google account settings. And Kimberly's back. So Brigitte um, sent us quilts that she made for her quotation collection. So I'm very excited because I'm gonna get to show you those. Now that collection, pre-cuts and yardage are not in stock yet, but they will be in October. So this is like a little preview. So the first one is called Prism. It is, a the patterns are all available now. It is, it uses a layer cake and then background and other, you know, other prints, but it's layer cake friendly. It's 73 inches square and we're gonna try to hold it. Ashley's gonna help me. Say hi, Ashley. Okay, I don't know how, <laughs> it's so big. If you guys could put like the bottom of it on the table, oh. I think that'll help. Okay, good. Yes, Thanks. everyone, this is Ashley. Say hi, Ashley. Okay, so I think you should zoom. Oh, well, no, it's fine. I think we should zoom out on that. On the top? Yeah, because now it's just showing a tiny. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Hmm. And I can tell that she didn't just use quotations. She also has some of her modern backgrounds that have, um, that are in here. And some of the modern backgrounds have been discontinued, but a lot of them are still in stock. So that's the front, and the quilting on this is amazing. It's custom. And then we'll flip and do the back, I guess, because the back is fancy. Oh, my back. So the back is fancy. She used spotted, a yellow spotted. We are going to have spotted fat quarter bundles back in stock in November. Some of the spotteds are now out of stock, and as soon as they're back in stock, we're gonna have lots of bundles. So she used spotted here, and then she pieced some blacks over here to kind of use her scraps for her back. So, so pretty. So pretty. And lots of, um, lots of points. <laughs> The next one is called Play A Card. This one is more beginner friendly. It uses two charm packs of quotation and five yards of a cream from the quotation line. And we sell her patterns both as paper and PDF. And this one is 87 inches square. So this is gonna be heavier, Ashley. I don't know how we're gonna do it. Okay, so first we're gonna just hold it and then we're gonna try to put it on the table because it's it's so heavy. Okay. Also, Zen Chic uh, Brigitte is in the chat. Hello. Oh, awesome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So let us know if there's anything you want us to say about these. I love the quilting. Whoever does her quilting, it is amazing. And then the back is, she just did a white. It looks like a Bella solid, mm -hmm. but look at this beautiful quilting. It's so awesome. I love it. I love fancy quilting. I'm too scared to do it online. The next one is my favorite out of all of these. It's called Zen Cabin. So it's like a modern take on a traditional cabin and Ooh. 65 inches square. It uses a jelly roll and two yards of quotation graphite, graphite which is a spotted, which will be in stock with quotation. So spotted is a basic. And I'll show it to you up close. So do we need to put it on the table, Lily? Uh, yes, please. Okay. 
I need to grow five inches. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Let's put it up high. So this one looks really fun, and it would be a way to use if you have a leftover also of something really big pieces left over. And so this piece right here is your spotted. So let me, let me hold it up. So you can see that it's got dots, Ooh. and there's two different color, sorry, two different colored dots. And spotted comes in about 30 SKUs, and we're gonna have it back in stock soon. But look how easy this is. Mm -hmm. Look, Lily, you could make this. Yeah. Why don't you just make it and bring it next week? Okay, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks so easy and fun. Oh my gosh, I love that dot. I do actually want to make it though. I just can't quilt. Okay, we'll make it and then it can be your intermission. <laughs> okay, on the back. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I should have said. So on the back, she has gray solid, Bella solid, and then she has one print that goes all the way down. It's text. And so she probably cut that length of fabric because there's not a division in it. So it's just got inspiring words down with a gray Bella solid. And then we have cross it, which is more of an art quilt, which I would be way too scared to ever make. It is 85 inches square. Me and Ashley are gonna die. We're gonna, we're gonna be out of breath. <laughs> Workout it, for the day. Yeah, my workout. It uses one jelly roll or one honey bun. And then it's spotted 1660-87 for the background. So this one's big. Ooh. Okay, first I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> okay, we'll put this on the table now. Oh my goodness because I have my shoes on. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Can you see it good? Yes. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you the back is a solid Bella. And look at the quilting. So I think the quilting is um, custom and not pantograph, but it's just basically. Yeah, uh, Zen Sheik was letting us know the quilting is done by Rachel Hauser from Stitched in Color. Okay. Good. She does an amazing job. So you guys send some quilts to her. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty it is. Okay, so those are the big ones. Thank you, Ashley. Yes, let me know if there's any yeah. questions on these because I have some smaller ones. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, I'll wait for questions to roll in. Ashley, everyone says they love how your mask matches your shirt. Oh, she likes oh. pink. Yeah. She likes pink. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, while we wait for questions, I'll go through some earlier Super Chats. Okay. Uh, from Aaron Palmer for $5. Uh, Aaron says, love the live streams. Friday highlight for me. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and then a new member that we had that had joined before the live stream is Dreamers Homestead. Welcome, Dreamers Homestead. Thank you. And then another new member is Jean Cameron. Welcome, Jean. And then uh, we got a $5 super chat from Bonnie Eisenhower. Thank, Thank you, you, Bonnie. And Bonnie says, I've been quilting for over 25 years and still learning. Thank you, Kimberly. Yes, you can always learn. Mm -hmm. And I think the best thing about quilting is you can try something and if you don't like it, just don't do it again. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing that uh, if you're trying something to know if you really like it, the rule is you do it 10 times. That's something that I've learned with my kids is you try it 10 times and then you'll know if you, that's how many times it takes to know if you really, really like it. But if I don't like something like starting off, I just, I don't do that 10, 10 times rule. But I use that rule in my house because I'll say, well, you have to try that food 10 times to know. Because that's, that's like a, it's actually like a scientific thing. Oh, that's funny. I do three strikes and you're out. Oh, like you well, for, times. for food, for your taste buds, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's all about, that's for food. It's not really for other things, but uh, okay. I make it go to everything. But it's your taste buds, it takes 10 times mm -hmm. because we're trying to get Christopher to eat more okay. different things because he eats cheese mm -hmm. and bread. So he's branching out and he ha we write down how many times he tries it. And if he hates it, he does, like after the 10, it's like, okay, you don't have to do it again. Yeah, he didn't enjoy it. We just want him to eat like a few more vegetables. Mm -hmm. So this next one is called Splash Down. 
It is a free pattern from Maywood Studios. If you wanted to make this, you would use four inch triangles paper, four inch triangle paper if you didn't want to do the traditional way. And on the back, it's a white Bella solid. And she used this binding in a lot of the quilts. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice. It's very Halloween too, since Halloween is coming. The next one is a mini quilt free tutorial on Zen Sheik's YouTube. So um, Lily, has, Lily and Ashley have put a link to it. So if you want to make this, it's free. She used quotation and then this print right here is your spotted. So this is a free video and I love the back. I guess I should put it that way though. So that one's free. The next one is a pillow. It's called Plus Pillow and it is a pattern. And on the back, I love, I've never seen a pillow opening like this. I really like it. That's really cool. Because it's like they put two tabs here, but they're fat tabs or long tabs. So like when you start a zipper, they just made a big tab right there. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at it yesterday to try to figure it out. The next one is the compass block pillow. This is not the cross, this is the cross stitch pillow. So this one was made from Heidi at Fabric Mutt and that is her blog, Fabric Mutt. It is a free tutorial and it's really cute. Mm -hmm. So we have also linked to her blog to show you um, how to get to it. The next one is the Compass Block Pillow. And this one is part of Moda Blockheads. So I have talked a lot about Moda Blockheads and this is one of the patterns that Zen Chic had and part of Moda Blockheads. It is block number 19 and it uses foundation paper. And you print the foundation paper, it's completely free, and she put four of the blocks together. And then her back is a zipper. And I'll pick it up. The next one is from S-O-T-A-K, Handmade. How do you say it, Lily? I think it's Sotak or Sotak. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone who knows how to pronounce that correctly. And we linked to her blog on this. And we don't have these leather handles, but I found some, Denise found some on Etsy, and Ashley linked to them. So leather handles, and then there's quotation on the inside also. Mm, so pretty. Yes. This next set is a zipper pouch set of three by Noodlehead. She is a fabric designer for Robert Kaufman. Her most recent collection is called Drift, Drift Lists. And this blog post is amazing. I looked at it yesterday. It's completely free, but it has photos of every step and it's stepped out to where somebody like me could actually make it because I do struggle with bags. You will never see me make a bag live, I know that, because I definitely don't know what I'm doing. So again, Noodle Heads blog, and also all of these fabrics are different. So some are Robert Kaufman, some are like made in Australia, hand, hand block printed, and this one is quotation, but there are some other fabrics that are not quotation. But on the blog, well, actually, okay, all of these are made out of quotation. Her tutorial uses different fabrics, but it's really nice because she links to what those fabrics are and really nice photos on where you can like really do it. And then we have a Quilt As You Go boxy pouch. Mm -hmm. This is from Pink Stitches blog. And this is the one that also has really good photos. And she put a really nice homemade mm -hmm label there. I like the little handle on it. Yeah, it's like... And so she just did a patchwork. Mm -hmm. So those are 
what we have that's made out of quotations. So we wanted to do like a quotation trunk show and just show you how amazing that fabric is. Sometimes um, it's better to see stuff in person like made up because you can like really see how it like comes together. Mm -hmm. So let me know if there's any questions on any of those. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna let questions roll in for that as well. A uh, big thank you to uh, Brigitte from Zen Cheek for uh, letting us borrow all her beautiful projects. And Super Chats, there's so many. Thank you guys so much. So we're gonna go through more of those. Uh, from Debbie Worthen for $4.99. Debbie says, looking forward to making six inch blocks to go with my Tula sampler blocks. There's more than one way to conquer a UFO. Put two projects together. Yes, thank That's you. Really creative. Uh, we have a new member, Jen Giro. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Fran Richards for $5. And Fran says, watching from Sydney, Australia at 1 a.m. We'll be sewing my block later today. Oh. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, from Judy Hampton for $5. Judy says, great video. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. And then we got a $5 super chat from Gail Stale for, oh, sorry, I already said for $5. And Gail says, great that you do these for us. Thanks. Thank you. We're also going to, for the charity quilt that is hanging behind me, it is called Serendipity. Thank you guys so much. We're at over $5,000. And this is gonna start in um, 2021. And we're gonna add a live stream to our lineup and I'm gonna show you how to cut all of the pieces for your row, because we kind of did it in rows, and how to piece one block. So I'm gonna do it along with you, so it's gonna be another super long live stream. That is, um, Corey can't, usually we have the designer of the fabric come and do the tutorials just so that you have somebody different than me, um, but she's um, not gonna travel right now, so that's how we're gonna do it this year. It will probably go back to the old way in the following years, but that's what we're gonna try to do this year. And um, our suggested donation is $50 for the use of the pattern. There is a quilt kit and a backing set available for sale. The bag that I had earlier, which is right here, is also in stock. And there is this beautiful butterfly charm that you can put on your bag. The fabric is Spring Brook by Corey Yoder. The background is thatched by Robin Pickens. And so that is our serendipity QAL. It is so exciting that we're gonna do that. And I'm excited that we're gonna do all the cutting and everything. Mm -hmm. Also for those video live stream tutorials, they will be starting in February of next year. Yeah, and they won't be on a Friday. They'll have, they'll be a different day because there's no way I can do um, the socialites and the serendipity in one video. I'll probably fall over. The next thing I wanted to talk about was Stitch Pink. So um, I'm going to show you the quilt one more time. And this is, oh, go back to that. That was my oh. scraps on my floor. So that is what I talk about when I say I throw scraps on the floor. That's what my floor looks like after eight hours. But you can see the scraps are big enough where you can just take it and like look, grab them all together in a ball and throw them out. So the Stitch Pink Quilt is a 2020 quilt along in support of Moda's virtual awareness raising event, which will last through October. It starts October 1st, and they're gonna put one block up every day for 31 days. So if you wanna make this, that is great. We have a quilt kit, but if you wanna make it with your scraps, definitely do that. The quilt we, that is shown right here was sewn with Moda Grunge Basics. It finishes at 64 by 76. And um, if we run out of kits, we will make more. And um, there's more information on our blog about this. And there is a lot of information on Moda's blog. And there's also information on Moda Fabrics United Notions Facebook page. Okay. And let's see, more Super Chats. Um, oh my goodness. Oh wait, new member first, Connie Millette. Welcome, Connie. Thank you. Yay. And then Super Chat from Shelly Heron for four ninety nine, And Shelly says, love everything you guys do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, $5 Super Chat from Deborah Weidrick. 
Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Oh, and Deborah says, love Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you. We love you, too. Yay. And then we got a 1999 super chat from Janet Buster. Thank you. She has a whole row in the pew. She has a whole row. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you so much. So I just, the last thing I'm going to show you today um, is this amazing fabric. It's by Fig Tree for Moda, and it got reprinted. It is so rare for Moda to reprint a group. And this one is Christmas Figs too. And I thought showing you a half yard bundle would be good because you could really see the color range. But this just came in this week. And I have made a quilt out of this. But um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to sell out again. But I just wanted to show you guys because we in May, a lot of you were upset that we sold out. So I want to let you know we have it back in. And then All Hallows Eve also came in yesterday. And this is the one that I'm going to be doing for the social lights. So as you saw, I did orange. So I'm probably gonna do part of them orange, part of them gray, and I might or might not use the black. And I might pull some skews from my stash that are orange. And I might use different backgrounds. I'm kind of just gonna play it by ear, but this is back in stock and it just came back yesterday. So I wanted to let you guys know that. I'm happy to answer any questions if there's any questions and any, you know, definitely like the video, any kind of suggestions you wanna give me for next time. I know that I was kind of messy on the table. I've gotta figure out a way to like have everything in a certain spot. I will improve on that. But other than that, um, definitely leave me comments on what you liked, you know, so I can keep changing the channel. Lily and I can keep changing the channel yes. to what you guys were looking for. Ever evolving it. Uh, let's see. Connie Nicolaitis says, can you explain again about the charity prices, the donation versus the kit? Okay. So for the quilt kit, you're paying for the quilt kit and that's just for the fabric. And in your kit, you get the instructions for the entire sew along printed. So you get that before everybody else because it releases every two weeks for free on our blog. You don't actually have to buy anything at all. You can use your own fabric if you want to. We, Kevin and I donate $20,000 and we just do a lump sum instead of trying to say we sold a hundred kits, you know, a hundred times this, this dollar amount. We don't do all that. We just say 20,000 is what we can afford to give. That is way more than the money that we make from the bags, the kits and everything else. So we give 20,000 and we just ask if you want to donate, you can donate a dollar. You can donate whatever you want. Anything is appreciated. It goes directly to make a wish. And throughout the year, we will show photos of kids that have wishes granted. You will notice that we haven't shown any for several months. And that is because most of the wishes are children who want to travel. And right now that's not um, possible. So that's why you haven't seen any. And also, we can't go to the wish grantings anymore. So the only reason you're not seeing things, we're still granting wishes. It's just a different time in the world right now. Mm -hmm. All right, then some questions we had earlier from Barbara Bryant. Uh, can someone help me? I'm doing the Lori Holt farm sampler and there's some embroidery and some blocks. Do you embroider it first or wait till it's quilted? Lori embroiders it first. From Steno Stitches, I'm curious if Kimberly makes quilts for her own bed. No. I have them hanging in my bedroom, though. So I have some hanging, and I don't because I have a dog that sleeps in my bed, and I also have a husband that sleeps in the bed, and I also have two children who somehow come in my bed in the middle of the night. And um, I just don't want, like, everything ruined. But I have them, I display them on two couches. I have a lot of, I probably have four, three or four quilt racks or ladders. So let's see the ladder. Anyway, there's a ladder that we hang quilts on. So I have in my house several ladders. I have, I keep them in buckets throughout my house. I just don't put them on my bed because I prefer to not wash them at, very frequently and I don't want my dog to get them dirty. Right. Uh, from Bianca Tyler on cross stitch patterns, do you have pre-done packages for floss or do I need to order patterns first and then the floss? 
for the serendipity? I think in general she's asking. So we do all of it. So sometimes we have kits. You can buy the pattern and the floss. Sometimes we have floss kits that go with patterns. Sometimes we don't. But we do list, when you click into the pattern, if you scroll down, we do list exactly what the author of the pattern used or calls for. Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends. We do a lot less kits in cross stitch because a lot of people, are they like different cloth. And some people like DMC, some people like Aura Floss, some people like linen, some people like Ada. So it's not like quilt fabric where you there's one variety, there's like 10 varieties. So that's why we do less kits because it's easier for you to customize yourself. Okay. Um, and then I didn't show my journey to Nebula earlier. I don't know if you just want to show it real quick. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go and Lily's going to end the show. What? How about that? Yes, let's oh, do that. No. Lily's going to end the show. Oh, no. So let me move these and then get find my mask. So you guys have a great weekend. i got to find my mask though. Before I do. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you guys next week and Lily's going to show you all her amazing stuff. Oh my God. Okay. Um, so... Just real quick, my journey to Nebula. Let me cut to uh, top camera here. Okay, this is my basket where I'm keeping everything. Oh, I should take my mask off. And this was Seaside from last week. Uses the Sidekick ruler. And I don't know if you've seen this, Kimberly. Uh -uh. This is my Seaside. She's busy. Wow. But I like her. Yes, that is my Seaside runner. Finished that last week. Um, I'm more confident on the binding thanks to um, that cross stitch tutorial you did for the binding the other day. Oh, so thank you. She for had that. to help me on the on the video. I couldn't <laughs> figure out how to join the strips, so Lily had to come do it, and I had to just copy what she did. Which is funny because then I learned it from you. Um, well, and then, I get I get nervous when I have to do stuff <laughs> I don't like to. And then um, this week we were doing Lucky Charm. Uh, we were supposed to do the piecing this week, but I'm a little behind, so I uh, just finished all my cutting and my um, layout. So this is kind of how I've laid out roughly how my Lucky Charm pillow is going to look. I am using the Liana fabric collection from Kimberly Kai of Ruby Star Society. And then these little leftovers are actually going to go um, on the sides here of the pillow. So I'm going to spread these out on those edges to uh, square it up. And this pattern uses the Hex and More ruler from Jaybird. There she is. Okay, yes. And yeah, that's our show. Thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for letting me wrap up the show, Kimberly. And see y'all next week. Hang on. End screen, end screen, okay. How did you do it?